Good afternoon to you. Mark South of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for the 24th day of October 2017. Hopefully your Tuesday afternoon is going well. In the tropics, things are going well for the most part. Nothing major out there. You know, 12 years ago, speaking of major, we had major Hurricane Wilma that had developed in this region and it menaced the northeast tip of the Yucatan for quite some time, Cozumel, Cancun, and then it made that turn and came across this way and headed out to sea, and not until Harvey, making landfall over here, just a couple of months ago, had had we had a major hurricane since. It was quite a long time, almost 12 years, between Wilma and Harvey. Quite remarkable, and that was 12 years ago. Today, I was there. Uh, we had our early generation of camera systems down here in southwest Florida. The most notable success was the camera system set up in Everglades City, and we captured the storm surge uh, as it happened down there. Check that out on the YouTube channel, Hurricane Track. Search for Wilma. It's there, and uh, you can see that whole uh, episode and how everything turned out. And uh, We've come a long way since then, for sure. So what's happening out there today? Well, we have Invest Area 93L now. The Hurricane Center has designated it as Invest Area 93L. And as you can see here from the 2 o'clock outlook, uh, broad area of low pressure centered near the east coast of Nicaragua is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Close proximity to land is likely to limit development of this system for the next day or two. However, environmental conditions are expected to be conducive for some development to occur. Later this week, while the system moves slowly northward over the northwestern Caribbean Sea. So if we look at it from the five-day perspective, this is how it shapes up. And it looks like it's going to end up over here somewhere in that northwest Caribbean Sea region, which is climatologically favored this time of year. Water temperatures throughout this area are very warm. The upper ocean heat content is there. But it is late October. Uh, we have a frontal passage right now. Uh, in the east coast, uh, southeast United States with a colder, drier air mass coming in now to this region. More fronts coming. It's just getting later and later for these systems to try to develop. But that being said, you can still get a tropical depression or a tropical storm to form from something like this and have it move up here and maybe merge with a frontal boundary that's coming in with a big trough and get a lot of rain and maybe some severe weather and just general nasty conditions over a large area instead of a concentrated powerful hurricane in one area. That's one way to look at it. So I'm still not exactly sure what's going to end up with this system, how it's going to all play out. But overall, the environmental conditions, especially the upper level winds, just don't look that favorable for this to develop into anything significant. If we look at the satellite loop this afternoon, you can see this is the area that we're talking about. And there's also some energy over here in the southeastern Pacific. This is that frontal boundary that has come through. And you can just note by the lack of cloud cover up here over the southeast United States and the northern Gulf of Mexico that the air mass is much drier and much more stable. Uh, but this is the area that we will be watching, and it's going to be several days in its evolution. So, you know, stay tuned. It's not... Uh, I, I honestly don't know what's going to happen with this. I don't really have... Um, I don't have any kind of good guidance one way or the other. The models are not that reliable. Well, let's just say they're not that persistent in developing anything substantial. I don't want to say they're not that reliable. That makes it sound like uh, that we can't trust them, but they're not being persistent uh, in developing anything substantial, which is good news. And if that's the case, then great. This will end up just being uh, a windy kind of rainmaker, and that's about it. But... Do not underestimate that very heavy rain that could fall across this region, especially over the next several days. We'll just have to wait and see how things pan out. For now, uh, obviously over here in Central America, the heavy rain could be a big problem. Not so much for Jamaica. You look very clear right now. Maybe the Cayman Islands at some point. And I think Western and Central Cuba, maybe South Florida in a few days. Uh, we're just going to have to kind of wait this one out and see what happens. Looking at the... Um, 18 UTC, or what we call the 18Z model plots, really not a lot of model guidance out at the particular time 
these are just kind of wacky. I wouldn't even worry about that. Uh, climatology and persistence up this way, which in this case, it makes sense. You know how I always say ignore this one? Well, this one's about the only one that you should put stock in, I think, right now, because climatology and the persistence of what should happen is that it would move up into this area this time of year, not over here. These are the ones you discount this time. I think this one makes the most sense this time, the, the Kleiper model the climatology and persistence. But as you can see, there's just not that much guidance out at the moment. There's not a well-defined circulation center. It certainly is not a tropical depression. So there you go. Uh, the intensity guidance also rather flat. And the ship's model, which is a statistical model, um, it literally stands for uh, statistical, let's see if I can remember this, these hurricane intensity predictions, Statistical Hurricane Intensity Prediction Scheme, SHIPS. but I couldn't say it. Uh, so that's the statistical model, and uh, it's, you know, robust tropical storm, 60 knots or so, maybe, just under that by five days. And some of the other modeling indicating an increase there towards the end. So again, we'll look and see what the trends are over the next couple of days. Now let me just show you this. This is the GFS from this morning's run over the next five days. Here's the energy down here. You also notice there's a lot of energy over the southeastern Pacific, all of it competing for the same upper ocean heat content and latent heat content that's around this area. So you get one tropical cyclone that tries to develop here uh, near the Gulf of Tawanapec towards the end of the run. Right in here, you'll see it come together. And then maybe, just maybe a little piece breaks off up here. You see it right there and starts heading up towards the Florida Keys. But Let's just zoom, uh, not zoom in, what's the word I'm looking for? Go to the last frame, and then we can zoom in. So if this is exactly what happens, if we take this verbatim, this is really not that big of a problem. A rainmaker, eh, some pretty strong winds up here at the 5,000 foot level, 30, 40 knots or so, but that's 5,000 feet up. Really not that big of a problem, just a messy, uh, rainy kind of stormy scenario. Which, you know, in and of itself can be a problem, but um, that certainly beats some kind of a hurricane in there. And then we have to just see, does this exist? And if it doesn't, will this be more energized? So I think a lot of it hinges upon this one right here. We'll put a question mark. It's a pretty bad question mark, but you get the idea. You got two pieces of energy that end up here. I just don't know. This one's a mystery to me. I don't know what's going to happen. So I guess we'll all have to just watch and see as this evolves, and we'll figure it out together. All right, but at least we can discuss it here each day, see what we know as each day passes, and how things turn out. But again, the bottom line, no major signals as of yet that this will turn out to be a significant event. Now, that can change. We know that. So don't take what I'm saying as being nothing at all is going to happen. I just, I'm not seeing the signals that, that suggest it'll be a very big event. So that's good. All right, that's it for me for this afternoon. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. I am Mark Sutherth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have more for you tomorrow morning.